okay, in this video, what we're going to do is continue on from our last video talking about reactive animation and focus in this video on how to go about editing any reactive animation that has been established. Cool. So how do we do this? Well, Zach kind of let the cat out of the bag in the last lesson by talking about the key frames that were created when doing set driven key. Oops. Which was cool because it gave you guys the idea that, you know, doing reactive animation really wasn't that much different than doing regular keyframe animation with the exception of time is no longer our driver. It's now some other attribute. Well, that's true. So in editing reactive animation, really it's just a matter of changing around your animation curve. It's no different than editing an animation curve uh, that's a result from regular keyframe animation. Right, just like we discussed in the introduction to animation curve uh, video a couple videos back. Yeah, so here we are. We've got a sphere, the same one that we messed with in the last lesson, where basically you can see down here time is not a factor whatsoever. And if we move this in the translate Z direction, we'll see quickly that translate Z is a driving attribute of translate Y. So as I move this forward, you'll notice that we have climbed, leveled off, and then descended. Okay? Simple enough. So what if I want to start editing this animation? What would I need to do? Well, this is a very important thing to understand. You would need to select the driven object because that is the object that has been animated. Right. I mean, if I come up here, make a sphere real quick, move them over, come over here to, let's say, translate Z, and keyframe them, move them over, move this guy over again, keyframe them again by hitting G, and then coming back over here and move way over here and hit G again, I've now created animation. Who am I going to select when opening up the graph editor? Well, you're going to select that sphere. Yeah, I wouldn't come over and select this guy. If I wanted to edit his animation, I'd select him. Mm -hmm. The reason this becomes confusing for beginners is because right here it's very obvious who we want to select. Because who's driving this? Time. time. How are you going to select time and open up the graph editor? Well, you can't really. You're not. But the moment you involve two objects and one object has an attribute that's driving another object then it can quickly become confusing to a beginner as to which object must I select in opening up the graph editor. Right. I've seen this happen with many students. So in this particular case, we need to select the object that's been animated. Well, in this case right here, who's been animated? Not time. He's been animated. Let's go ahead and delete him out. And that means in this particular case, while this object does serve as the driver and, and the, the driven, driven, if the driver was on some other object, it would still be this sphere that we would select. Yeah, just basically remember to select the driven object when you want to edit your animation. Precisely. So we've now selected the driven object, and we simply come up here to Window, and down to Animation Editors, and the Graph Editor. And let's go ahead and hit F to frame that up, and here we are. We've got a curve that looks identical to the curve that we had when we were doing keyframe animation using the timeline as our driver. Yeah. Very, very much identical. So... Um, what do we do? I mean, if I come down here and move my timeline, nothing's going to happen. That's right. That's because the bottom down here, this is not time. As Zach pointed out in the last video, you'll notice in the bottom right-hand corner, we do have the name of the driving object and the attribute that's responsible for doing the driving. As a matter of fact, that's just to give you an indication that the numbers along the bottom of your graph view no longer represent frames. They represent the value of this attribute. Ah, so gotcha. we can see in this particular case that at negative 12, our sphere is at a value of 1. At 12, a positive 12, our sphere is also, in regards to translate y, is at a value of 1. Right. And as our sphere moves in this direction here, it gets to somewhere around, say, 5, 4 and a half. Now our sphere has a translate y value of 6. So you read the graph exactly the same way as you read a curve that was generated from animation against time. Right. The thing to understand is this along the bottom, this is no longer time. And this can actually become confusing. Check this out. Right now, if I drag my sphere in this direction, mm -hmm. right, you would think, at least as a beginner, that you'd come in here and you're reading it in this direction. Right, that you're reading it from left to right. Ah, but that is not the case. Starting over here on the left-hand side, what is the translate Z value of our sphere at the moment? Positive 12. Positive 12-ish, right? Yeah. <laughs> so here we are, positive 12-ish. That means we're over here. Now, what happens when I move my sphere in this direction? What happens to translate Z? The number's it's getting smaller. numbers decreasing. So that means we're going this way. So now we're actually reading our graph backwards. Right. 
please keep that in mind when you're editing a set-driven key relationship that involves motion because that can become very misleading. Well, it's just a very good idea when you're working in 3D not to think of directions in the sense of left, right, forward, back, or even up and down. That's Always right. think of it as positive direction and negative direction. Absolutely. In this case, we, given the view of the, of the uh, scenario that we have here in the perspective viewport, we're not moving from left to right as it looks on your screen. We're actually moving from a positive direction to a negative direction in Z. That's right. Now, if you want this to match up in this particular case, watch this. <laughs> nice now sound effect. Ma- Thank you very much. Now it matches, right? So here we are at a positive 12, and as we're moving to the left, the number is indeed shrinking. So we can just pretend it starts over here, and now we're moving in the right direction. All right, something else I do want to mention just for the beginners out there. You're not going to see any indicator inside the graph editor of where you are along that curve, the no. way you do with the timeline indicator. This red line right here, which indicates where you are in regards to time, you can see it moving as I move the timeline indicator, has nothing whatsoever to do with this curve. Right, and a uh, set-driven key is not going to have any equivalent to that indicator, so don't look for one. Nope, it's just it really is all about understanding this down here. You want your indicator? I'll give you your indicator. You take a look at the object that's driving, and you look at its attribute. <laughs> There's your indicator. There you go. Right? The one okay. right there on your screen. So now let's talk about actually editing this animation here. Okay. So let's kind of move this on over to the side. Now, I still have this turned around so that it's going to match up with our curve right here. Mm-hmm. For editing the animation, it honestly is the same thing as editing any animation curve even if you're dealing with just regular time animation. Now you're nicer than me. I'd say go back and watch the curve animation yeah, video. Yeah, and then <laughs> call this, let's just call this a day. Um, but, you know, I'll come in here. I'll grab this guy. Actually, here you go. Watch this. Okay. The first thing I'm going to do in regards to editing is add another keyframe in here. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of one problem that a lot of beginners have right off the bat, and that is I've set up a set-driven key scenario, and, and I need to go and add one more keyframe, and but I've already done it. <laughs> okay. Oh, so what I, I usually so. say is, okay, calm down. If I understand you right, you basically want to add another key into the set-driven key scenario you have established. But yes, that's correct. But I've already hit close on the dialogue. Right. Thing. That's okay. Watch this. This is really cool. First of all, let's go ahead and figure out what keyframe we want. I want to make it when, as I move my sphere forward, and it gets over here to, let's say, about a value of zero. So right about the middle of the Yeah, this black line, the dark line right here is going to work well. So when translate Z reaches zero, as seen right here, Mm -hmm. I want my translate Y to dip down to, let's go down to like two. Okay. So we're going to put a keyframe right there. Cool. So let's do this. Let's come up here to animate, set driven key, open up our options box. Now, since this guy is already involved in a driving scenario of set driven key, we've already got the driver loaded and we've already got the attribute selected. How convenient. So all we need to do is click on the driven attribute. That's right. And in this case, it's going to be translate Y. Cool. So we'll go ahead and grab that. We'll set translate Z at zero. And we said we want to translate Y at two. So what am I doing over here? I'm establishing the relationship. When you're at zero, you're at two. Cool. So there's the relationship. I just hit key. I just hit key. But I'm going to pull this up so that we can see that when I hit key, Maya is going to be nice enough to update this for me automatically. It's going to drop a key right here. And my curve is going to reflect that by instantly coming down, then back up. Okay. Ready, set, key. Cool. How cool is that? Isn't that neat? The set-driven key dialog, you can leave this up at all times. You can you can uh, set up a reactive animation between two objects. Then you can select two new objects and load them over here for whatever reason and set and then animate them. Right. Just Very r- convenient. One thing I do like to point out, if ever you're trying to use the set-driven key dialog and you don't see the objects that you want in either window, don't worry about that. That's why you have the load driver and load-driven right. buttons. Man, use these buttons. Yeah, use don't get stressed out. No. So let's go ahead and close this because I think we've made our point. Yeah. Let's see what happens when we draw uh, drag our sphere now back and forth it should go up and then drop off relatively sharply and then climb back up and then drop off again it has an m feel to it <laughs> so here we go nice so ready set forward drop up down Boop. cool so you're starting to feel the m as i go real fast i feel m. the m you feel the m okay so we see how that works <laughs> but you know what to get this extra keyframe in there, I had to bring up the set-driven key dialog. Oh, all this work you had to do. Work. I mean, you had to click the mouse at least two or three times. Oh, yeah. That's intolerable. Yeah. Let's go ahead and select that. this keyframe. Hit the delete key. So there you go. Mm-hmm. It's been removed. Our animation looks exactly the same as it did before. Right. Now let's add a keyframe ourselves without going through the dialog. I can just come up here to the simple add keys tool. It requires you to have your curve selected. So just simply select your curve like such. Come up here. I'm going to grab the Add Keys tool, and then you can middle-click anywhere you'd like to add a key. Click, 
Look at that. And nice. It's just that easy. I'm going to go ahead and hit W to grab my move tool again in case I want to move something. But I want to do some precision stuff over here. So I can just simply come up here. And remember how before this was time and this was the driven attribute value? Yeah. Now this is the driver's value. And this is the driven's value. Which makes sense. Which makes sense, Because time is the driver. That's right. So, um... Well, was. Well, was. Yeah. Now it's the driving attributes yeah. value. <laughs> well, time is the driver in standard keyframe animation. That's right. So, in this case, this zero belongs to translate Z for nerve sphere one. So, we're talking zeros here. Now, we just got to specify a value. So, if we put a value of two, we got the exact same animation without having to go in and do anything ourselves. Yeah. We don't have to go to any other dialogue. Nope. No, we don't have to bring up the set driven key dialogue. And you can feel the little M power right there. Nice. Huh? Now, of course, modifying our curve is exactly the same as what you saw in our uh, Working with Animation Curves video. We can simply come in here and maybe grab our two top-level guys, and I'll go ahead and, let's say, uh, flatten out the keyframes like such, cool. and then maybe free the tangent weights, and we'll take this guy and make it relatively abrupt. We'll take this guy and same thing, make it relatively abrupt. And then this poor guy down here, let's go ahead and free him and take him and make him kind of, now there's some abrupt stuff, right? So let's see how that feels. Uh, boom, boom. So that was boom, boom. Yeah, very abrupt there in the center. Cool. Or we could start doing some more crazy things. Let's just see what this looks like. If we take that out, maybe come over here, grab this key, and uh, let's see. We'll take that up and out. We'll grab this, pull it away. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's going to get some crazy He's stuff. having fun now. We'll delete that out. We'll grab this tangent over here, pull it up. I'm going to free it, drag it up in the air. There you go. And then for this guy, let's go ahead and bring him down. And actually, we'll go ahead and drag him out just a little bit. And I'm going to have this work with me. This will make a lot more sense in just a second. I promise. <laughs> it might. Because now it just looks like you're playing. Yeah, hang on. It's going to make sense. Check this out. Okay. We're actually, as we begin driving forward, we're going to quickly jump up to altitude. Yeah. And we're going to kind of hold for a second before we start climbing a little bit more than almost an instant fall off. Show me. So here we go. And look at that. Right it's there. It's almost, almost pops. Boom. And look, it holds for a second. Yeah. Huh? And then a little climb. Huh? A little mm. climb. And you get ready for a fall off. This is what we call an immediate crash. Boom. <laughs> cool. Boom. Boom. And down. Boom. So up. There you go. Just animating, or excuse me, just working with the animation curve as if it was any other animation curve. Just keep in mind, instead of time... It's not time down here. You're now dealing with the driving attribute value versus the driven attribute right. value. That's it. So we don't. We can see that by coming into the graph editor, we no longer have to go to the set driven key dialog once we've established this kind of an animation curve. We can add our own keys in here. We can continue tweaking as if this was just a regular animation curve because it really is, <laughs> and uh, produce the animation that we're looking for. And that's all I wanted to show you guys in regards to editing reactive animation. It just takes a little bit of practice. The key thing to remember is always select the driven object to go in there and produce this. Cool. And with that, that's it. That's going to wrap up this video right here. Thanks a lot.